Everyone's eager to learn, huh? What's going on, guys? Cool. Um, all right. What's going on, Steven? We are going to jump into our Monday footage. So, onward with uh, another week of Open Guard. Justin auto censored there? Yeah, I think so. Uh, it's Cole and Chris. Um, got Josh, Jason, and Justin and Caleb. Take down from Jason. A little leg ride to keep Josh from uh, hitting the guard back as he circles behind and tries to advance. Cole using some more Greco style uh, upper body grips here. Really trying to smash down on uh, Chris's underhook and doing so successfully. I like the trip. I like I like how um, how that wound up playing out for him. Um, it was really initiating it off of Chris's outside, um, but I, I think like Cole. I don't know if you're in the chat or anything. Um, what you actually had here, you, you had a body lock um, or like a body fold type takedown grip here. So you when you circle around, you can actually make a connection. Um, with your hands here, um, and I'd like to, I'd like to see you focus more on your head position um, when you're starting to get these upper body grips. You're really going to have to be very forceful with your forehead, right? Like trying to get it either into the chest or under the chin of uh, of your partner um, to try and get them moving the right way. Because what you do get, it, you when you you fight this way or when you do stand up this way you're very susceptible to trips um, because your legs are so close and you're so upright yeah. uh, meanwhile Jason works from uh, a dorsal Kimura position and it looks like Josh gives him an early tap there very good Ted, Charlie, and Jordan. What's up, Mango? What's up, Mango? Oh, yeah, you know what? We've got, uh, got a few videos from Mango here, too. Let's get through a few rounds of this, and then um, we'll go over a couple of Mango's rounds, just because Mango will be our... Our first uh, non-student who uh, we're going to review. So thanks again for sending that, man. I know I got four yeah, of uh, four, four videos you sent me. I think we'll maybe go over two today and then two on the next stream. Okay, everybody's rolling now. Jesus. <laughs> oh, and then I'm over here on the side with uh, Tony, who was an intro... With some previous experience, so we're just kind of, kind of feeling him out, see what he knows, see what he likes to do. He actually had a, a good guard, surprisingly good guard for someone who, by his his uh, his words, hasn't trained extensively. So, just throwing a few different looks at him. Good sweep, Jordan. So Jordan working from bottom half guard here against Charlie. Um, until, so who's back? Who are you talking about, Justin? Jordan going for the standing guard break. Excellent, man. That was good. So let's look at this. Oh, Tony. 
Oh, Tony? Yeah, he was he was super cool. Hopefully, uh, not very long. He seemed quite impressed with the school. I think he liked the vibe you guys all gave him. Um, thanks again for, you know, all the upper belts you trained with him that night. I always, always like to put, you know, prospective students with, you know, our... Uh, more experienced guys just so they can see what they're getting themselves into at the school not in a bad way but in a you know i know you guys know how to control yourselves and uh give good roles to, to people who are interested um so jordan here doing great he stands up against charlie i like the uh control over the hands so charlie can't reach up and break his posture doesn't even think twice well maybe twice but not three times about the uh the double ankle grip that Charlie sets up because he's standing up nice and straight gets the legs popped open the reach back going over and then settling in uh, to control the guard pass really good stuff that was, that was good good job Gavin trying to set up back control doesn't quite get the knee in Never three. He immediately dropped back on a straight ankle. Good. Yeah, I I think he uh, I think he threw up some sort of leg uh, attempt on me. I was just like, oh, all right. Well, I'm not gonna lay here. Wasn't anticipating having to defend that, but I like that. I don't mind it at all. What's up, James? Hello, James. Should be coming back soon. Back stateside. Yeah. Yeah, we should be seeing him soon, man. It's Jason. He said back in class in like the fourth or the fifth, I believe. Sweet. Like March. Uh, what happened with Justin and Caleb back there? So Caleb putting on some smother pressure from side control. Got a far side underhook. And maybe an Americana there? <laughs> Nice. It's more like just pressure. A better way to spend your time in an airport than watching our Twitch stream. Hell yeah, dog. I really like the way that that Jason is um, is maintaining the back on Josh. Josh has given him a lot of trouble, constantly switching his hips, doing a really good job of trying to misalign, right? Getting his shoulders down, turning his hips away, <clears throat> doing a really good job here. And Jason is very calmly um, readjusting, right? So he sets in his long hook. This was this is actually really nice. So um, see how he keeps his left leg uh, attached to uh, Josh's right hip? Um, that gives him the confidence to where he can unlock his legs, back heel with his left, and then plant his right foot on the mat so that he can scoot his hips out and away to get back aligned with uh, with Josh. It's a very subtle movement, but that's often what's needed when you've got somebody on your uh, that you're trying to maintain the back. That's very kind of wiggly, right? Like trying to get their hips and their shoulders out of alignment. Yeah, then, he's, then he sets up the uh, body triangle to really secure yeah. the lower body. So now he could focus his, his upper body attacks uh, a bit more. Try to get under the neck, try to go to work. James or Caleb wrist locked uh, Justin apparently. It's filthy. Oh, I totally missed them. They're all the way in the back. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good save from Joe. It's about rolling into Josh. Uh, I just want to look at uh, Cole and Chris here, so looks like Cole's managed to make his way to the mounts. Sets on the Americana pressure. Um, nicely decides not to crank with uh, seconds left. Cool. Yeah, that was solid. <laughs> Making sure it's on camera. Cole, what happened to your eye? It looks, it looks black. We tried to find it on Sunday, but we couldn't. Ooh. A little knee 
pick action? What's going on here? It says Joe and uh, Jason right over here by the clock. Jason with a nice heavy collar tie or a little mutual collar tie between them. Joe leaves his knee way out front. That was great. That was really nice. He's He's been really hot on them lately, uh, Jason. Um, and yeah, they just keep going on this one. This is really nice. Solid. Love how he lifts the leg up and continues to drive to the left. Yeah. How did uh, Cole, looks like maybe Josh, did Josh pull guard here? I think, yeah, I kind of pulled. getting into a side triangle looks like he changed his mind here switching up into three-quarter mount dummy sweep on Braden ankle pick on Braden just generally picking on Braden <clears throat> Did they just move? Is that all that was? Yeah. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Some heavy forearm pressure onto the uh, onto the neck, I guess. Yeah, like a paper cutter type of uh, style from Mount. Yeah, Josh, what was that? You're supposed to eat that, let your neck, you know, get hurt. Jason is working up the body on Joe, but Joe's got that overhook that he likes on that left arm. Okay. Good shoulder and push. That was really nice. So yeah, so I think I've gone over this move. Anytime I feel you guys in the right spot for it when I'm on side control with you, um, I like to remind you that it's an option. Uh, the right spot for it is cross side over the hips. Body weights over the hips. Um, you're not going to do it against somebody who has a cross face on you, which Jason Jason doesn't have right now. Um, and his weight is below jo Joe's shoulder line. That's the prime opportunity to get a little V grip in the armpit right here. Perfect stiff arm, uh, nice rigid arm all the way out. So you're not you're not pushing them away. You're just kind of setting a bar in place. And then your your core is what's helping you get through this. You can um, Let's see if Joe backstrokes with his other arm. Uh, not quite, but he gets up on his elbow. That's really the purpose of backstroking and manages to make some space. Jason adjusts so he doesn't fall over, um, which is great, uh, but really, really good um, good way to get that, that cross side pressure off of you, Joe. Yeah, that was awesome. Really well done. Yeah, I love that, that sit up. And it doesn't matter, you could do it the smallest guy in the room can do it to the biggest guy in the room. It's it's all about where their body weight is. It just makes it so easy. Justin with a double unders pass. Um, mm, that we was, went over that. What's that? We went over that in class, so it's good. Oh, perfect. Yeah. So this was this was was well done. Um, you know, he's got a he's got scoop grips on the thighs of Chris here. Um, and he does, he's, he's trying his best to get, um, Chris's hips basically riding up on, on Justin's own thighs. Um, so he can't quite get it with the scoop grips because, you know, Chris can, can kind of butt scoot back a little bit, um, and walk back with his shoulders. So he goes to make a full locked grip in front, um, and then sets the hips right up here. It's really nice. And he tosses him by, um, and Chris has just 
again, I haven't trained with Chris uh, other than one time, and he's just he's got a formidable guard here. He's got um, a get, real way to. He's just good at putting his knees back in. Like, yeah. And I, I, so we went over four different passes in class. The, uh, the shoulder knee push where you kind of spin your mm -hmm. opponent, step by. Uh, we went over. Uh, damn, I taught the class. I should know. Uh, we went over double unders. We went over a rolling Kimura last for fun. Um, oh, and a leg drag. Um, mm -hmm. And I think, I think Justin was nearby when I was going over this with uh, maybe Andrew. I think Andrew asked like, how do you, how do you counter the uh, the double under pass? And it was exactly what we saw Chris doing, like not letting the legs get up over the shoulders, but sagging down onto the elbows lifting your hips up so that you're hanging all of your weight on your opponent and then trying to shoulder walk back to prevent the hips your your own hips from being elevated and, and thrown by and it, you know justin either heard that or has done this plenty of times and, and uh felt that that was a, the right way to approach it so that was a nice little back and forth with the you know a good offense and a proper defensive reaction and uh justin came out on top but chris was just able to get the knee in a few seconds later. Mercy grips. Cole had, good, <laughs> Cole had a good uh, breakdown of turtle on um, on Josh here. Uh, from here. He reaches all the way across and grabs a uh, control arm and winds up pulling him using his knee as a wedge um, and then taking it out. So his left knee, uh, or I'm sorry, his right knee is going to come in as a wedge and uh, and block Josh's right side as he uh, hikes over with the left leg. So that, I think what he's doing with his right, see how you can see his knee poking through the hip crease of, uh, of Josh there? That's that's really what was uh, was able to wedge in place and, and get Josh turned over to score the back take. Actually, I like that breakdown if you can get it. Um, the the risks that you have are the makikomi, the fat man roll. When you reach for that far arm on somebody that's that's large, they can uh, they can overturn you. And then um, the uh, what I do like about it is that it doesn't leave you open to leg attacks. Mm. Yeah, yeah, put your legs in a pretty safe position. Mm -hmm. They're not behind the hips, and they're not in right. front of the shoulders. Yeah, I never thought about that. You think I would have, considering the times you've knee barred me from you being in turtle. Everybody's doing those rolling, the rolling leg entries from turtle now. You have, you got to all be. On our uh, aware, I guess if I ever train again, I'll uh, I'll uh, be able to see. So we go a little off screen here with this, but I think Andrew hit the takedown of the night here against Jordan, uh, right here on the left side. Uh, we went over the uh, Sesai uh, Suri Komiyashi. I think I said that right. So you could just see the pulling underhook that Andrew set up here. Let's see if we can catch a frame. Because we can't see the pushing shoulder, but it looks like Jordan's getting twisted up here at the shoulders. And I don't think... Let's see. Uh, maybe it did work. So, Andrew's foot. Let's see if it blocks the foot. Sounds about right, Justin. Jordan tries to step by. It almost looks like he, he gets either he slips here or there's just too much torque on it. Um, either way, awesome. Awesome stuff. Love seeing the uh, the moves we go over get get put to use. The Tamagotchis are back now. <laughs> are they really? I'm not. I'm not surprised. Yeah, they're. Yeah, my my kid has killed like 14 of them already. But yeah, they're back. Yay! I never had one. I'm not about to buy another. Maybe we should breed them. We should 
breed Tamagotchis. Get a Tamagotchi farm. Or mill. Like a puppy mill. A mill, yeah. Josh with the rolling Kimura. So I threw this one in for fun, uh, just because we had we had enough mat space, and uh, I was showing everybody how to do it, like you know, controlled slowly. Um, Josh really uh, sending it here. What, Josh? What I like about this, you know, I showed you guys how to do it um, in a way that you won't face plant, because I feel like that's normally most people's concern is they. They roll mm -hmm. for it and they don't know how to roll. Josh, you know, feels confident in his ability to roll. As you should hear, he rolls over his shoulder. Um, he's not he's not going the wrong way. Uh, he has Cole's arm isolated. He loses the grip here, but gets himself almost to the T position. Cole rolls up and he takes advantage of that. Hell yeah, man. Other way. There you go. Cole's walking him through. And I don't know if you... Yeah. Um, the Kimura finish, mm. I guess. Mm. There you go. Yeah, if you guys want to get in on the Tamagotchi mill, let us know. We're open to investors. No promises on your returns, though. And we might rug pull. Nice. Tony's got a single leg on Cole. Going for the little trip. Joe and Steven. I'm sure this would be fireworks. More of that uh, Sasai setup here. Slight, well, slightly different. Um. Stevens, I, I showed an alternative grip instead of the pulling underhook using using the uh, collar tie. Um, only only thing missing here, I'd say, is the shoulder push. Stevens working with like this this uh, overhook. Um, and no no real foot speed, but getting Joe moving. Maybe he's a little dizzy now from that that merry go round. <laughs> Damn uh, Nogi baseball bat choke that Steven is super keen on these days. So he's setting up. Yeah, I want, double, 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 yeah, I want everybody to see what Steven's doing here so you don't get caught in it. Um, <laughs> it's not even like a collar tie. You know, he's just. What, he's, what Steven's doing is doing up like an S grip behind your an neck. S and then mm -hmm. bringing his elbows in. And then he sits himself through. And you can see he gets this kind of like uh, scissoring compression with his forearms on your neck. And then you tap and you're like, I don't know what happened. Better tune in Wednesdays and some Sundays to watch the stream and see what happened. I accept, Jordan. <laughs> yeah, Joe, I think you're like the third person Steven's caught that on um, in the last week. Y'all need to get off Instagram. Stop, stop stealing moves from Instagram. <laughs> Jason and Chris do anything here? Looks like Chris got on Jason's back. Let's see. Looks like Chris had been there for a while. So Jason from Flows Guard, we're looking uh, right here. see how so Chris gets Jason yeah okay that's how he flanks him you got the underhook yeah 
Can you go back to how he got that? So I, I don't think he got hit a knee lever. He actually went the other way. Jason just gets a little, uh, a little extended. He does. Yeah, that's. And Chris took uh, took full advantage. Yep. He saw the exit, so he manages to get to the back. And uh, you know, it's Jason's not especially easy to strangle these days either. So good on Chris. Let's see if we could see any of the hand fight here. Because he doesn't trap. He doesn't do like a leg trap. He's got the uh, body triangle on. I think he probably just slow, steady pressure. There you see him make the switch. Yeah, it was just a little bit of tenacity and, uh, and good hand fighting. TikTok, bro. Like Kurt. <laughs> Josh, still looking pretty sharp with your counter wrestling. Andrew, trying to get in on a single there. And uh, looks like you caught him with. Caught him with the nasty little guillotine. That was a bit of an a bit of a shitty angle to be caught in, but nice. And Andrew, that was you know that was just the result of like that was one of those like lazy last minute I've lost my uh, posture kind of singles. We all throw them, um, kind of a common jujitsu thing. Um, that's that's the worst case of what happens there, really. Oh, I gotta give big props to Gavin here. So Gavin and I, I go to work my takedown for the night, setting up my my pulling underhook, hit a twist, hit a twist, and he hits the hardest to on me. Sick. Yeah, it was it was a very good counter. Like he he really spent no time coming back Step to it. Right yeah. Boom. And he reaped yeah. that leg away. With, with real intensity, so that was that was excellent. Let's see how Joe handles Steven's body locking. Okay, doesn't. <laughs> So I, Steven was talking about this with me, I think on Sunday, um, or maybe it was after class, I don't know. But so this shoulder crunch that uh, we set up sometimes against the body lock, the way Joe has it right now, it's very high up in the armpit. So you're not gonna get, like, you're not gonna get the leverage on this that you do um, when the arm is already extended right like think about steven has either locked hands or very close hands behind joe's back right now whereas if you know joe was in a closed guard there was no body lock on it's a little bit easier to wrench that arm to a, a dangerous position uh, position with the shoulder crunch sweep or the, sh the shoulder crunch grip if you're gonna set that on from the body lock I don't want to see it. I don't think it's going to be as effective up in the armpit. Like, you have to separate the elbow. It's got to be down closer to the crook of the elbow. You know what I'm saying? I do. Like, um, I, I don't know. I I think I work more from, like, an outside position on the elbows where I, like, kind of grip and pull at the elbow rather than digging in because I could I could hardly ever get into this anyway, um, this grip. But, yeah, I just I don't know how effective that's going to be. So the clasped hands over the shoulder, um, I generally, I feel like I don't have a ton of leverage, like you said, unless I can get maybe my elbow or forearm pried up underneath their, um, their elbow. Um, in my opinion, the strength of the shoulder crunch comes from you going elbow deep on the shoulder. Mm -hmm. So 
true. If you know, if if Joe, you've got your right arm through here, and you've got a grip over top of the shoulder, and you're trying to use your hands to draw the shoulder over. Um, the way that I like to do it is actually to send it in deeper, come over the top with the sh uh, with my elbow, then I make the the connection, and then I can start using my entire body rather than just my arms to start turning Stephen. Yeah. And Sorry. again, uh, you know, take that for what it's worth because I, I haven't been able to shoulder crunch Stephen in quite some time. Yeah, he, Steven manages to get his hips up <clears throat> very high um, as you start to execute the sweep. And he uses, I think he uses good hip switching to keep his feet underneath him on that. It's, I get them very, very rarely on Steven these days. That was a solid mount um, for passing the guard there. That was really, a, a really good. Um, you know, he's, he notices that Joe's legs are both pointed to the to that side, like towards him. So he, you know, kicks his heel all the way over, over top of the legs, uh, makes an upper body chest to chest connection, and then winds up being able to get straight into the mouth. Meanwhile, Gavin strangles me. Good. I'm, I'm glad. Glad Gavin had so much fun with that uh, the takedown. I forgot he pointed to the camera. <laughs> Speaking of pulling stuff off Instagram, this like double knee position that I'm in, I saw some like awesome high level wrestler, like collegiate wrestler doing that. And apparently it's like, it throws off a lot of his opponents because nobody ever takes that stance. And I was, mm -hmm. I was toying with it with uh, Braden and Gavin that day. Cause I think they're the only ones that I can get away with that on. Reason being, if they sprawl on me, I feel a little less helpless than if like Caleb sprawls on me. I get an awesome takedown on Josh, and I'm so excited to look at it. Let's see if Jill puts any of the passing stuff that we went over to work with Chris. Going for the double unders. double unders. Gets it. Let's see how Chris reacts. Ooh, nice. Nice snap down by Josh. Yeah, yeah, that was a that was a strong one. The slippery, Boom, yeah, that was good. slippery floor didn't help any. Yeah. So here I cut my angle. Yeah. Going for a D. <laughs> Why? You say it like you think something's coming. So I get a yeah. pretty deep angle on Josh here. Um, and we kind of like hesitate here. Both of us are kind of like feeling the other one out. Um, but I, I realize like I've got, I've got better head position. Like my head is higher. Um, his body is broken down. Um, like his posture is broken down. So I go for uh, hard Goshi here instead of the Uchimata. And Josh, thank you for not totally committing to planting your arm there, just preventing any sort of gruesome injury. But as soon as I hit that, I was very, very happy. 
Yeah, so one thing to notice here, uh, like, let's go back real quick because I think it's important. When you got to know um, from standing, like, there's there are, there's positional dominance when uh, when we deal with the stand-up game as well, right? It doesn't matter whether we're talking about wrestling, judo, um, it, like, it just doesn't matter. But, but what, what Matt's saying here is, like, if you look at where his head position is, his head position is in a pushing motion towards Josh. And then Josh, you're looking away. Um, not only are you starting to look away, but he's got you turned in such a way that your shoulders are like below his shoulders and you're planted on your left foot here. Um, this is giving Jameson not only head height, but he's starting to build up hip height as well. And so when you get this and then you've got that planted foot on that far side, it's um yeah this is this is a recipe for for a good throw is what this is <laughs> <laughs> yeah so rather than the uchimata um i go for the hargoshi which is just stepping across uchimata would be my my left leg going up raise you know raising his hips trying to break the connection with the ground for his left foot um instead i just step across primarily because i felt like i didn't have to do too much to get the the finish here it was just get the leg out of the way um, his head is already low I could just kind of keep it there um, by hanging on him with that underhook and uh, get him on the ground and ready to mount see what Joe does with this the legs of Chris here yeah he's managed to keep keep Chris from getting his legs back in after that uh, double under sweep Chris rolled up to turtle position um Joe's doing a really great job here keeping keeping he space. Is. There he's starting to give Chris an opportunity. Yeah, but he's got his legs in uh, he had his knee in the hip crease yeah. of Chris. And he backed out. I like that he backed out instead of just driving and driving yep. and driving and then, and then failing and losing uh, losing the position. Agreed. Yeah. Ronnie putting the almost a double underpass to work pressure here well the single side uh, heavy pass switching back to the other side nice really good keeping Cole's knees pointed away Cole can't turn right now so that's a deal nice Joe is putting to work the body a body drill here so he was he uses a uh, Kesa um, Kesa Katame with the um, the arm in to clear that elbow inside control. Doing a good job of keeping Chris flat on his back. Kind of taking a page out of your game here, going to north-south to mm -hmm. uh, avoid the, the legs from coming back in. Yep. Control. It's breaking him down. I'm still watching Joe and Chris. Yeah. Yeah. So Joe, the the way you make that uh, a little more potent, you gotta have the arm. You gotta have like the top arm under control with um, a figure four Kimura grip, <clears throat> and then you can either play with like the scissor. Like the leg scissor, I know. I know Luke loves to do those. Um, or you can gather that bottom arm. You already have the top arm controlled with your arms, but you could gather the bottom arm with your leg to go for the side triangle. Um, otherwise, the way you had it there, Chris had both of his arms uh, to disrupt your um, your head scissor. Nice thinking, though. I like the upper body transition to the lower body, getting up to a a good position. Chris doesn't. I don't know if Chris really knows what to do here. He's because he's not trying too hard to defend his leg. He might just have been waiting for you to make that jump. Let's 
see what Chris works in passing. Meanwhile, Braden's got himself a hand fight to contend with here. Braden on the leg again. Joe. Joe taking no uh, no hesitation there. To the outside. Joe's just eager to break some legs in this round. Braden up for a, a nice arm bar attempt. Even just threw it. Got up real quick. Yeah, just a weak grip on the arm, Braden. Really got to commit to that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, especially from that position where if you're going to choose to fall back, you really need to have control over the arm because that, you know, that falls the opportunity that they have uh, to extract their elbow. We go one more round here and then uh, check out some of Mango's stuff. Get my arm broke later. Barrymore. Good. like Cole's ready to break you. Did you just push him down? Yeah, kind of. Uh, I can't say I got like a clean takedown on, on Caleb. It was out of collar tie. There might have been a slip here. And then just like he and I were actually yep. joking about this, how that that collar tie when you get their head low enough and it just turns into this downward push, and you can just almost the way we stiff arm from that that uh, sit up and side control, I could just stiff arm right onto the back of his head and, and kind of big brother him down to the mat. Nothing very technical. Great. Sorry, man. You can go. I'll start somewhere. <laughs> no, no worries. Yeah, dude, you don't need to be sending us like death match rolls or anything. Plus, it it makes it easier to uh, to kind of pick out technique and and you know see what you're thinking, see what your uh, your strategies are, and like the tactics you like to use. Also remember, this is on a one and a quarter playback speed. Oh yeah. <laughs> I do that so that these streams don't last deep into the evening. Somehow they still do. Really trying to focus on getting Caleb out of turtle position. Um, Without sacrificing myself to a Makikomi or. Shoulder? What was that? He, I think he locked your shoulder down and yeah. then hit a. Okay, and then he basically hits a knee lever. Yeah, he had like a shoulder crunch set up. Yeah. Ooh, Josh. Up in the corner here. Let's see this takedown. So, Josh and Charlie. Mm -hmm. Josh with the over under. Okay, so oh, yeah. Charlie goes to step through on an Asoto Gari. And I'm getting this Gari of your own. Yeah. You know what though? Like, you might be able to speak more to this, but I, f I don't mind Charlie's approach here. Like mm -hmm. the the reach, the grip. Um, I think the the one thing he's losing is the head height battle. Mm -hmm. um, but I like the attempt. I do too. Um, it's hard from this angle to see exactly where it went wrong. I don't think he gets Josh broken down enough to the side yet 
it looks like Josh stays a little bit too upright. And then that's, know, that's where he, he loses it. Yeah, that's, uh, I think you're right on the money. I think he, yeah, I think that's, that's simply what it is. And then he now, steps off the side too, rather than breaking, like going through Josh, yeah. he's like cutting, you know, along Josh's hip line. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, Josh is going to be very strong there. He's, he's already planted on that foot. Yeah. He's, he's upright and he's behind Charlie effectively mm -hmm. at this point. So exactly. Yeah. It's not, in fact, like I wouldn't even say, I don't know if you could say that, um, Josh hits in a Soto Gari here. It's right. It's more of like, um, I don't know what you'd call it, but like where you use your th your thigh to like pick somebody up it's it, uh i can't remember what it's called it, it, there's a term for it in like wrestling um he doesn't quite break charlie off the ground but similar kind of uh kind of mechanic so upset over that takedown literally just dragged my head far enough to the side that i couldn't stay up well have a smaller head Oh yeah, Caleb went home after, <laughs> well, I don't know if it was directly after class, but he shaved his head. So. Oh, really? His head may actually look a little smaller now. Okay. If you thought he was bald looking before, or balding. Colin Joe, uh, Colin Joe, <laughs> into it. Nice. Tried the Maki Komi. Joe did. Josh, it kind of looks like, kind of looks like that, that bald guy in the, the chat. Um, <laughs> the what happened? Who, who with the Maki Komi? Like? <laughs> I mean, you're not old enough to remember the Britney moment. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, Joe gets the Maki Komi. Okay. Yeah, Cole, yeah, Cole yeah, you did. It. Sorry, I missed it. I missed what you said. Sorry. Doesn't get Cole down enough though. Um, Andrew and Justin, what's been up with these two? Looks like they're okay. They're just chatting. Gavin to Remy Ashi, looking for the sweep. Big boot on. Gavin, uh, we could go over some of the finer points of heel exposure in this position. Um, the best ways typically involve reaping, which I don't care if you reap Steven's knee uh, or mine for that matter, but. You know, obviously, you always caveat that with, you know, we'll teach you the dark arts, just uh, don't use them in competition. We'll let you try and figure that out, Caleb. <laughs> yeah, it took me a while. Just know that he's laughing at you this whole time. So I'm, so I just want to point it out because I've been pointing out everybody when they do the standing guard break. Look at, look at my approach to it with Caleb, while standing in a giant puddle. So obviously I have concerns about slipping, but <laughs> I really put the bounce on here to try to break the legs open, and just like we saw uh, Jordan doing earlier, I'm reaching, I'm opting to reach back to break the ankles open to try to get a leg up and over. Caleb. Uh, is wise to it and quickly tries to switch his legs down into a leg attack. Um, but that gives me the opportunity to sit across Ashi and break his knee. So 
Charlie got. Looks like Charlie's using. Nice. That was a good little sumigashi or uh, ukiwaza or whatever the hell it's called. Um, all right, cool. Let's uh, let me make note of the time on this. Fifteen minutes. Uh, we'll come right back to this stuff in a second. We'll finish out the rounds. Uh, everybody, let's give it up for Mango. One of our, uh, long-time viewers, non-students. Mango, I believe this is you, right, bud? Um, and you've been training in your, I think you said at your college. All right, so we get to see, uh, some of the young guns getting after it. It's all good, man. <laughs> we were just making fun of uh, one of our students. I think it was Austin. Bought himself a purple rashy because he didn't know that it was like a ranked. No, Mango is uh, Mango's just a loyal viewer who's been around uh, watching us for a while now. All right, so playing from Butterfly here. And if you know, if you can, if you have any insight, Mango, on uh, your opponent. Um, let us know too. Just belt levels, stuff like that. Your, I would say, just guessing off this first minute, your opponent seems pretty cagey about like passing your guard. Um, he doesn't have. I wouldn't say he has too much of a of a method he's using yet. Like he's not going up the center, doing a little bit of hand fighting. Um, there we go. We start to see him kind of try to control the legs here. We're just giving him a little bit of the business. Just about there. So yeah, your your partner here needs to focus a bit more on control of the legs. Um in, in the class that, that I taught on Monday, we talked about some pretty high percentage guard passes, uh, like the double under, leg drag position. Um, I wouldn't expect him to do a rolling Kimura here, but uh, you could also tell him he could work from getting a single leg up the middle too. Like if he's, if he gets himself familiar with like the headquarters position or a split squat, that's often the first place I, I tell people to uh, to work from. He was strong and not experienced. Smush me. Uh, one go practice guard retention. You're, yeah. Um, I kind of had a feeling that's what you were working here, to be honest. You're doing, you're doing a good job. You're, you're obviously keeping your legs in between uh, you and, and him, but you're also fighting for inside position with your feet. So every time um, you do wind up able to engage you're uh you're generally trying to get one of your legs in between his which is nice so now you're going for a lockdown, lockdown. Yep. so we get to smash position trying to get to that underhook on that left side Yeah, another another sign of inexperience on his part is just like the foot pummeling or lack thereof, um, giving easily giving up this underhook right now. Uh, if you want to help him out, I would definitely emphasize that that underhook battle from uh, either side of half guard, of course. And then for you, I mean, as far as guard retention is concerned. Uh, one of the thi one of the things Mike's alluded to in some of the roles tonight is the knee lever, which uh, when you're flattened out in bottom half guard, a uh, great place to put your inside foot is directly outside the knee and then step on it with your outside foot. And then when you get that uh, set up, you're gonna kind of clamp on your opponent's thigh. You take your hips up off the ground like a sheet of paper thickness and you point your knees outward. And what that's gonna do is either sweep him very easily or it's going to make him base out if he's got an underhook or a cross base he's going to base out and that gives you an opportunity to get a frame back in 
which you can then use to get another frame and start to work back to your guard. So it's, it's a really, really effective tool for guard retention. Um, the knee lever, uh, and I, I feel like I was never clear if that's what the John Wayne sweep was when it actually turns into a sweep. Yeah, um, that's but, what I've always called it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can, you can like search for that online if you want to see other examples of it. But the John Wayne sweep or the knee lever is a really great place to start uh, working on some of the other points of guard retention. Uh, let's see. Here's where my six months of playing on edge. Oh, yeah, with the lockdown. Lockdown half guard, yep. Tracking with one foot is a place to start. Um, I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, uh, this opponent has the best head of hair, I think, in all of jujitsu, and I'm just, I'm just gonna say that now. He's got a ball and mullet. It's thicker than the Amazon rainforest. I don't know him, but I'm proud of him, and a little jealous. And so is Caleb, I'm sure. There we go. All right, easy guard pass in here. So this is kind of what I was saying uh, in the last roll, getting working from one leg up the middle uh this is a great place to start um that was honestly when i saw luke rolling with a black belt a long time ago that was what i realized they were doing they weren't trying to run around each other they were trying to go right up the center and then control legs hips all that and, and work their way around good attempt on a ghost escape from your opponent here I think this failed he doesn't really bridge up with it he kind of like tries to move you but what i'd like to see here is bridging his hips up to create to kind of get you out of the way and then quickly drop his level back down and hit this this shuck that he tries to hit that should get him uh out and around a bit more and then for you to shut that down uh, typically some heavy cross facing, cross facing and shoulder pressure um, does a lot to slow that down and he likes that one with all due respect Jordan. this is a nice regard See what, how he was able to regard. He's trapping. He's trapping your um, your arm. He's using the fr like the friction of the gi is, is definitely helping out the gi pants here. Um, you know, trying to trap that arm and keep you uh, away so he can get his left elbow like in forearm framed in place. Um, that way he can start moving you down lower on his body. Um, and then here he's starting to bring his knees up. That was really good guard uh, a regard. From your partner here. Do you have what grips do you have? Yeah, I can't really tell. Kind of looks just like a. Oh, okay. Oh, he's got pant grips. Or I don't think he was gripping the pants, but he was posting on them. Yeah. We had a big debate about whether or not you grab pant legs if you're in no gi. I don't know where you fall on that, Mango, but I am highly against it. Nice back step. That was really good. Using the uh, using that the arm hook here. This is interesting. I don't know if I. I think my arm, I tend to just take this arm straight up to the underhook, but I think you're giving yourself an opportunity to keep it there. Well, let's see, before I speak. So kind of a little bit of a cradle. When he does that, when he pulls his arm up and over, big misstep on his part. Now your own head is acting as an underhook, so it's not, you know, you're not in a terrible spot, but now you use that opportunity to, uh, to get the, the to get your leg out of his open legs and and mango and keep this in mind too is when somebody reaches over like that like how matt said that it wasn't a very uh, not it was an error on his part 
uh, when he puts his hands over his head and your head is that close, um, if you are able to extract your right arm and make a connection with your left arm, uh, you've got a you've got a full katagatame or a, you know a, a head and arm type of a threat here, and you can use that to pass the guard and eventually get to the submission. It's a that's a really good position that you're in right there. Looks like a little nogi Ezekiel attempt here. He's got his arm in though. I'd be surprised if he taps to this. I hope he doesn't. You are. Yeah. So he ends up on mounts. He's got his underhook. Trying to set up an arm bar. I feel like that was, he was a little overzealous in that step over. I, I agree. Because, Mango, he's got your left arm your left elbow up isolated from the ribs. If I were him, I would probably look to drag that knee, drag his right knee up towards your armpit rather than stepping over, especially since your arms are connected, uh, which he has the best view of. He knows that your arms are connected right now. There's no triangle here. Um, you're in a good defensive position for the for the move that he attempted. And then- So you're trying to roll through for the Omoplata. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't look like you were really threatened at all by that. Nice. Good stuff, man. You know what? Um, that looked like a fun roll. Yeah. I'll tell you what, let's see. This one's a short one. So we have a guy going more of an outside passing approach. He's really trying to disrupt your, um, you're trying to get you flat on your back. So that's that's why he's playing with your feet. Uh, he's trying to get you pop down uh, to where your shoulders hit the mat. Yeah, which if he, if he really wants, he's not going to do it with one leg. He really has to like grab both legs and, and kind of send it. Um, now he ends up in your closed guard. You actually frustrated. It looked like you you either flustered him or frustrated him by um, by using hand grips. Uh, you were you were very active on uh, trying to grab wrists and and I like that two on one that you're trying to go for there. Um, but eventually, I think he he just kind of tried to run around and you wound up catching him in that in that closed guard. I don't know what your approach is to close guard mango, but a, a good place to start, um, at least deciding which way you want to take it, is just think about either getting both arms, both of his arms on the same side of your body. Uh, getting, you can you can also uh, look at getting an elbow inside if he's very resistant to getting both arms over. Right here, um, this is a spot for either a what's called a top lock um, or shit, man, you went to 10th planet. So, you know, you may be familiar with dead orchards, the, uh, that position where it's like the, it's almost like a triangle, but both arms are still in. Um, this is where that happens when that elbow, keep losing my pointer, when this elbow is just inside the body, but not crossed over the center line. It allows your leg to uh, hike up and go over his shoulder while the other leg hikes up. Uh, typically, his arm won't be back like that. If it is, go for a triangle. Why not? Um, but yeah, both arms across. Uh, one arm slightly inside the body or one arm way out wide, right? And that's where you see things like uh, Kimura's, uh, Omoplata's, uh, transitions into clamp guard, things like that. Um, the, yeah, I saw the hitbox loop coming. But this is good. So... The reason that probably didn't work is his hips were off of his butt. Like if it looked like he was going to sit back for a second, which may have like caused you to think, hey, let me try it. Um, he just kept his posture a little forward, which made it more difficult to hit the hip bump. 
Uh, but remember, if you can get your opponent's arm to the mat on a hip bump, that's where you have the opportunity to swing this leg, like pull your knee to your nose, swing that leg up and over for a triangle. Um, you have the triangle, and then anytime our partner's hands are on the mat, you have a Kimura. So yes. here, if you were to you know immediately switch with your left hand, grab his right wrist, and then his head is going to be coming back this way, right? Because he's resisting your copy or your um, your overhook on on his head right there. So his head is going to be shifting over towards this side, which leaves his arm wide open for you to dive over for a Kimura in closed guard, which is a very very solid threat. Yeah, great sweeping position as well as a submission threat. Gogoplot attempt here. Oh yeah. Oh, he just sneaks the arm right by. I'm sure Austin would be uh, would be happy to see that. <laughs> All right, that's the end of that one. So I said we'd go over two, but these are pretty short videos. We'll go over all four of them. So this is the fourth match. Oh, okay. This is the continuation of that match. So here, Mango, you have uh, his arm. So going back to um, some of the positions that you can start working from the close guard, right? Um, your partner, his left arm here drifts across your center line, um, right here. Now, as soon as this starts to happen, his elbow is fully past your belly button right now. Um, this means that you have pretty much back, you have back exposure. Um, left hand, your left hand goes to his left hand, pushes on the wrist, your right arm comes up over the top, and now you can start working your way up to the back. Um, again, there's you have a, a very good opportunity here for an offensive position. Yeah, I, I think the biggest jump in my close guard game was the recognition of when the back became exposed and like just yep. understanding the vulnerability. And then, you know, of course, you got to learn how to how to uh, transition, right? That's that's the other part of it. But recognizing the uh, the opportunity is going to be really key there. Look into a deep half if he wasn't cross facing you. Good guard retention. No, oh, very nice. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah, he really, he drives forward a lot. And that puts him in very dangerous places. Like right here, I mean, look, like he's like on the balls of his feet right now, like pushing towards you. And it's, that's not that's not going to do him any favors. That's all. That's all potential for you to like redirect his his weight and his drive. And again, obviously, I'm keeping all this in in mind while while you say that you're primarily focusing just on guard guard retention, not necessarily, you know sweeping or, or you know any other any other sort of uh, tactical family um, of responses to that but all good things to keep in mind as you're training he's using the threat of the guillotine passing the mounts going to an immediate hand fight here you don't seem too phased And I don't think he even has a hand, like a full hand connection. So like, no. he might he might be able to, you know, utilize a five finger guillotine here, um, if he had a better setup. But looks like he's kind of burning himself out a bit. Be a little careful on that that escape. Um, this 
you're in a, a spot for an omoplata here. Like as he swung that leg over, he may have been able no, to control. Not. Also, um, same spot where you just had him. Like both of your arms are across yep. his center line, so you have back. He has your back exposed here. Yeah, the, I don't. I don't think those the guillotines didn't look tight to me. Up, oh, trying to get around for a quick guard pass. And one thing you could try throwing this in with your guard retention stuff. Um, I love to redirect my opponent's head uh, when they're in like a in the start of a cross, you know, a, a side control position. Like maybe they've come off a body lock pass. Use this arm. Don't use your hand, but the the forearm and the bicep. Swim it to this side of his head and get his head on the same side of your body as his hips are. So like, pummel his head with your full arm over, just like wing his head all the way to the other side when the head and the hips are on the same side of the body there isn't a pin you don't have you haven't passed the guard you don't have the shoulders pin you don't have anything or they don't have anything so if you can keep their head on the same side um, as their hips it's pretty frustrating for them yeah it seems counterintuitive um or like sometimes it seems wrong when you when you start doing it but um i know it did for me at least and it, it works a lot really yeah. really well cool stuff man mango thank you so much for sharing those videos with us i really really appreciate it big os in the chat for mango let me uh find where we were before there we go. that was a uh, that was super cool man and like yeah keep them coming if, and and if you're if you're playing with anything at class um that you you know you want tips on anything like that man Please shoot it to us. It's it's really cool. I, I like being able to do this for uh, for anybody, of course, for our students. But uh, I don't know. This platform is just uh, no reason we can't be spreading the love around. Yeah, thank you for sharing. And tell your uh, tell your training partner we're all jealous of his hair. Especially Caleb. <laughs> Meanwhile, Cooper back at it again, trying to murder me. Use those long words. Jeez. And, and he's throwing he's throwing some really solid techniques at me here. Um, using using like a kind of a high ball ride. It's on the it's on the top side leg, but he's he's hanging on here. Uh, to control and like look how he shoots in that strangle arm watch this like catches can what was that can we move comments this round can we move comments uh, this round Andrew. no we can't I'll just start game right behind the pillar right now I don't know. I saw some scrambling going on back there. I don't know if you want to rewind for a bit, see how that take if we could see that takedown. Uh, it's going to be right behind. Uh, oh, is that him and Danny? Andrew and Danny. Okay. Uh, so Danny hits a takedown. Andrew goes to reroll, and I think Danny comes back on top. Hide the pillar too. Yeah, try and hide the pillar too. Yeah. yeah. So Tony and Justin. I think it was about this time Tony was really starting to feel the fatigue set in. You've gone with me, Steven, Cole, now Justin. I don't know if there was someone else. Um, Coop getting so off of that, off of that uh, threat with the uh, the really great strangle entry. Does a great job here adjusting his way through this on the hand fight but most importantly not giving up on it like not thinking oh i need to readjust my my full grip and then giving me space to escape like he he slowly worked it in made some good tweaks as he went and ended up getting the tap and then real quick here hits the uh hits snaps me down front headlock 
and then just right into a good guillotine position into like a, a power grip like the, pa mm -hmm. the pushing up from the bottom rather than pulling up from the top um andrew let me know when uh things pop up i'll periodically turn the chat on and off because i can't see it super gas is really nice yeah yeah I, you are you just peeked right through who uh cooper no 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 um andrew oh oh uh, let's see on danny behind the pillar good let's see how much of it can we see there we go Damn, son, that's why you wanted to chat off. Yep. I don't blame you. Cooper was going for one on me as well. Now we got Jason, I think, on his own toehold. Um, that's something we don't see out of Jason a lot, is leg attacks. Uh, but he's up here with Caleb. Caleb diving on deep half. Get, do, great job getting Jason off balance here. And you go on the attack yourself. Uh, Caleb, did did you get that or did Jason verbally tap? I think he verbally tapped. Yeah. Is that his his foot was bent behind? I think Caleb got the toe hold on on Jason, or maybe. Because I didn't see the the knee trapped. I don't know if it was a knee bar or not. Yeah. Either way, I know Jason's not a super fan of the uh, of the leg lock game, but I'm stoked to see him playing around with some uh, some options there. Yeah, toe hold. That's what I thought. Caleb got it. Yeah, it was a verbal tap. Okay. Toe hold. See you this weekend, man. Safe travels. All right, James. We'll see you soon, bud. I will miss you this weekend, but I'll see you soon thereafter. I'll be back on Monday. Yeah, I'll see you Saturday. I think I'm, I'm teaching Saturday, right? Yeah. How did Josh get the back? He was going to be a late pretty, night. Pretty violent. Dude. That was a, another really awkward uh, guillotine that was put on tonight. Not, or not so even. I call it what's out joke? Yeah. He comes around to be like in the side position. Now he's got a, like you said, a guillotine. Josh, where are you coming up? You're hanging out with Cole too much. Where are you coming up with this? You know, it would be cool here if Chris, like, back rolled this way. Yeah, right over top. Yeah, it snuck his head out and took Josh's back. Dude. I mean, good improvising. It's like Danny and Andrew were going over the Anaconda, I want to say. Meanwhile, Joe, what does Joe get here? Joe, we might need your commentary on this. Oh, he gets the arm. Traps the like, arm, or is it? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, it looks. Well, he gets. Ted's arm is bent. What is he doing to the other arm? Oh! I. Joe, is that like a lat, a lat arm bar? Did you do like a step over and then use your right hand to finish the arm bar? Well, I mean, I don't need, like Ted's arm is bent. Like it doesn't look like there's any like arm. Oh, yeah. I didn't see that. Okay. I wonder if it's yeah, 
Uh, maybe a reverse triangle. He may have stepped all the way over the head and then just put enough. Uh, enough oh yeah, there. Just, just triangle. Yeah, yeah. He tapped early. Okay. All right. Good. Tap early. Tap often. Yep. Tap. Until you're a purple belt. Yeah. Then you don't do that anymore. Cole is down here on a Kamora. Mm. It's late in the late in the night. Everyone's slippery. Dude, I'm I'm so tired of rolling with Steven later. And we, he's going Nikki Rod style and just greasing up like crazy. <laughs> we have we have this most slippery rounds. Get the Jergens out. <laughs> well, either way. Morris slipped off there. Setting up your time. Got gotcha. you. Um, and Andrew, I don't think anything is happening. Yeah, you guys are still talking back there. Sorry, if if you guys, Andrew, if you guys get back to rolling and you want me to shut the chat off again, just let me know. Jordan in a good position for that uh, shoulder push. There we go. Cool. Except I would use the right arm, Jordan. Use the arm that is on the same side as the hips. Ronnie kind of gave that one to you. See you take down anymore. Yeah, for sure. Congrats, bud. Yeah, it's awesome. Oh, mine and Steven's match. Yeah, he about popped my eyeballs out of my head at one point. Oh, and I think he also uh, will watch Steven pick me up and throw me down like two times in a row. Cody Steele style and uh, tire himself out. And still eventually tap me, so not taking anything away there. Gavin on on a uh, or Raiden, sorry, on a guillotine. I thought he had like a really good angle. Oh uh, yeah. Steven with a much more gentle, kind takedown for Justin than he ever gave me. A step over armbar. Looking like he's one of Kurt's sons. Interesting yeah. finish there. This is, I think, what Justin was just talking about. So I guess that uh, shoulder Senkaku, but with the kind of with the reversed I'm trying to think because I don't I don't do that shoulder finish too frequently I think when we've seen guys like Eddie Cummings do it or, or uh, even Gordon in some really old matches I think the triangle may have been on the other side like he's like if Steven switched his legs for the triangle um, I think that's typically how you see it I mean either way here he's got he's got Justin um, beaten to the punch there for the the rolling escape which Were really you on the elbow, Steven? Were you like pin the wrist into your neck, pulling on the elbow for this finish? Because I don't I don't see the the lever, you know, that you could break over the hip unless I don't know. You you're saying that you've had to finish it more like a shoulder crunch. There's something going on with how Steven is controlling the hand that I think is is uh what's making yeah, it successful. Yeah, old. He he did it like a straight arm bar. Mm. Oh, I got you. I got you. Yeah, that's how he was able to get that. That's what I was thinking, because I didn't see you being able to extend the arm yeah. on the hip. Good adjustment. Joe is digging this crackdown. Have you noticed that? Like I saw him work it earlier. And then him cracking people down, like... 
don't know if you... I think he just turns the shoulders this way. But I just noticed him doing it a lot earlier. Yeah, the Tight way... Ways cracking him down. Yeah, I saw it in an earlier role. Yeah, this was just a consequence of how uh, he and Joe were locked up um, at the head. Good control at the end of the lever, Braden. And, and, uh, yeah, that's where I want. I want you to get your leg all the way behind him. Uh, not into like that Irimiyashi position. This is the most flexible Cole's ever looked. <laughs> Justin could not get any purchase on the ground. Everyone is <clears throat> slipping so bad right now. Yeah, it looks sweaty. Uh, Jason under the chat looks like he was trying for the the foot sweep we went over. Kind of, sort of. Danny with the big sweep on Chris. Steven. <clears throat> yeah, I feel like Steven's been working those for like a couple months now. And mm -hmm. he kinda like he had some early success. I think even Steven, you you may agree. I feel like we talked about it. Kind of stalled out in progress. Like a lot of us were starting to adapt and shut it down. And he's uh persisting through them and making them so much more sharp and unstoppable. Yep. What did Josh do here? Josh has worked his way into a very high mount on Joe. Oh, all right, cool. So Joe turns up um, in this high mount with his elbows uh, pretty well isolated at this point. Josh makes a really good adjustment here around to uh, like a, an S mount, essentially. Grabs onto that arm, takes it. Great arm bar. That was very nice. Yeah, we just talked about doing the S mount armbar last Thursday, I think, Josh, right? So, Steven. Same. That's. Well, opposite leg, or opposite side of the triangle, right? Yeah, I think that's the triangle configuration I'm familiar with, where. Yep. Typically, the, the shin is under the head, so it prevents the, the standard hitchhiker escape where Justin would actually come around in this direction. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, whereas before, if you guys are like, what the hell, that's the exact same. Uh, before, Steven's legs were crossed on this side of the armpit, I, I believe. And I don't want to go back to check and see if I'm actually wrong. Uh, 12.5. Let's go back anyway. So there, it's on the left arm. Everything's yep. over in front of the head. Right. Ste Steven's hips are down by Justin's hips. Whereas here, Steven's on hips... Yeah, Steven's hips are on the head side. Legs are on the head side of the shoulder line and uh, behind the head. Yep. 
What's up, Cody? How you doing, man? What's going on, bro? <clears throat> I think I saw on the gram you were playing Fall Guys earlier or something. You were streaming, right? Everybody go nice. follow King Chappie. Nice uh, rolling Kimura from Josh. Oh, he hit one again. Uh, I think I'm finally bouncing back. I, I'm, oh, yeah. I think I finally bounced back. My eye is no longer blood red. So that's good. When I was like getting thumbnails and stuff for the uh, for last the last stream to put on YouTube, yeah, I was I was just looking through the footage and like you just never looked like your eyes were open the entire stream. <laughs> it, was, oh. it was so bad. I had to wake like when I woke up in the morning. At one point, I had to pry my eye open with two hands. It was horrible. So terrible. Yeah. So yeah, at some point, Steven gets behind me here and uh, picks me up and puts me down a lot. There, yeah. So it was... Did Steven initiate that? Yeah, so Steven was almost trying to... Uh, I wouldn't even say he was going for the same move that we did in class because he's, he's pushing me with the the underhook not pulling me with the underhook this is almost more akin to like a lateral drop sort of uh twist like the 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 takedown we see caleb doing a lot where he's actually turning in the direction of the overhook i i missed the trip but he gets behind me and then now it's oops a daisy and then i say no 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 and then okay okay Yes, yeah, so it's the same the same thing that he was doing to Joe, and like the first roll, um, is exactly the way that he set that up too. Yeah. And it, I guess if you were to use that um, that turn and use the the foot block on the knee, that would be the uh, Hizagaruma. Uh, Nogi. yeah, Nogi Hizagaruma, you're right. So yeah, Steven gets gets to mount, locks up uh, a head and arm, and at, at this point, there was no strangle. Like, his shoulder is very high up on my jaw. Mm -hmm. Um but he even said after this, after I tapped, he was like, I was not going to let go of this no matter what. And he kept adjusting, kept adjusting. Um, kind of got to the point where I was just getting waterboarded with uh, his rash guard. And like I was seeing seeing fireworks like when you shut your eyes and, you, and, and they get smashed in and you're getting strangled at the same time. I was like, ah, this is going to be bad soon. So definitely earned the tap on that one. And it sucked. Meanwhile, while I'm tapping, Jason is getting a... Good double leg. Yeah. Got to drive on that, Jason. Drive, put him on his butt, onto his back, and then uh, think about, you know, jumping to uh, side control. Get your head on one side of his body, legs and hips on the other side. That was a really good takedown. Uh, just needs a tighter finish. And, to, and shit for Cole, like, excellent nice. counter. Uh, refusing to go to the back and then and then working to a, a strong hand position to hit that sweep I feel like at this point in the night Steven had zero problem breaking me down and getting me looking at the mat every time he got collar ties on me like, I was probably a little a little too uh easily broken down at this point i remember that happening and just like knowing that uh <laughs> oh yeah this happened so for everybody who's ever had to do a standing guillotine defense uh it works so what i'm doing is i'm letting steven pick me up i don't i don't care i'm putting my 
knee, like I'm resting some body weight onto his quad here. And then my arm is reaching up over the shoulder. Um, I, I should be reaching as far as I can over the back and trying to pull him down in this direction. Um, you'll see me briefly attempt to like knee tap with my knee right here. Ideally, I would pull him down like out of the screen uh, in that direction, trying to break him down, uh, which I get him moving a little bit, but only enough for him to let go. Not enough to actually get the takedown. Ooh, Coop with the nice guillotine. Oh, I don't know why he gave that up. He had a good guillotine on Joe there. Cole getting his smash on. Let's see if he can work that knee free from Jason's lockdown. There it is. Hand block from Jason. Nice. I think if Jason was able to switch his legs there, like scissor his, you know, like switch his hips rather, scissoring the legs, may have been able to win that scramble, but that was a tough one since he was uh, already losing the hip height battle. And Steven cartwheel passing over me again just to like throw salt on the wound. <laughs> and then these heavy hip switches, like that's that's what I'm saying with, with the... Um, a lot of his body lock passing, he's incorporating, I think, very effectively those hip switches to uh, to redirect the knees. I mean, in this case, it didn't it didn't work out quite as well. It was off of that cartwheel pass, though. But that's like seems to be a a really big part of uh, getting over the plateau he was hitting with it. And there, Joe, I'm I'm kind of doing this. I'm making the same mistake you made earlier, right? My my grip is up in the uh, armpit not lower on the arm and I'm fighting against those attached hands here I'm kind of prying up the arm but maybe not nearly as much as I, I needed to um, how did Cole and Jason end here Cole managed to retain mounts All right, cool. last round um we're gonna speed up this one a little bit just because it's getting late. I took down with kind of a head throw, and I, I really had to commit to that uh, that headlock grip on Chris so he didn't slip out and get the back. Joe and Charlie. Let's see how this ends. Joe, I'd like to see you doing some snap downs here. Or at least if you decide to break, I want to see you break with a snap down. Good head pressure. You'll have to show me what you mean, Steve. I don't know that I. approaching someone has he's just talking about pulling his own like resisting the the pull of the shoulder crunch grip like yep. with the shoulder crunch i'm trying to pull his arm up he's yep. just trying to pull his elbow tight to his ribs and his and to his hips to take oh. any leverage away that Got i can it. get that's what he and i had talked about yesterday after class but i guess the question there becomes what are you giving up when you do that right mm -hmm. There's, there's always, there's always a trade-off there, and that's, that's where, when we start to defend against that and adapt to that, that's what we have to recognize. I, you know, I guess just spitballing here, those tight elbows, while they are controlled over the hips, if I can, if I can pull your arms up far enough north of my hips, uh, with like a forward shift but you retain those tight elbows, what you're giving up, the trade-off, is a base up at the upper body, which is where those um, those kind of lifting sweeps come in where you, I'm like overhooking the arm with a butterfly grip, falling to my side. Um, think like a single butterfly sweep. You probably know what I'm talking about, Steven. 
I think that's where, but it, but it all comes down to who can win that hip position battle. I think. What did Josh do there. Oh, uh, Caleb hits a. See the sit out from Caleb. Caleb, you're just about there. You like your your yeah. underhook came out and you almost like elbow Josh in the face. Uh, that would have been the right position. I think Josh actually moves his arm here. Yeah. Yeah. He knew he was losing the position, so I think he just kind of bailed on it. Yeah. That was good, Caleb. So I'm going to be dependent. Be interesting to play with this. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, because I mean, you know, the danger is in the, I think, let's see, how do I say it? You know, when you're in the body lock and you're smashing my heels to my butt, you're taking away the effectiveness of my butterfly hooks. But if I can disrupt that just enough to get my heels away from my butt, like a few inches, that's where you become vulnerable again. Like that's where the the tight elbows aren't necessarily your friend, um, because now I have my mobility back and my ability to power off of the mat in those those butterfly sweeps. Jordan, um, I want to see you fix this because I saw you going over it with Ronnie. That shoulder push, I want you using this hand. Danny is in a he's in a slightly different position here. Um, cause his, his, uh, the way his leg is trapped, actually, no, the way he's picked his hips up off the mat, it's going to make it a little bit harder for this move to work, I think. Um, but if Danny's hips are on the mat on this side of you and like his ribs are across your body, that's the perfect time to hit that shoulder crunch. Now, shoulder like, push. oh yeah, I'm sure yeah. the shoulder push. You're right. It's there, man. That the opportunity's there. Uh, Cole, oh Cole with like a mounted triangle armbar finish. Nice. Further evolution in Cole's mount attacking. Jordan, if you want to, if you need me to clarify any of that, just remind me in class. Or ask Mike this weekend if you're there. Yep, I'll be there tomorrow too. Oh, wait, you're going on vacation or something, so whenever you get back, you know the drill. Just ask us. As always, that's how it works. Um, man, great stream tonight. Mango, thank you so much again for sharing those videos with us. Um, really cool to get to take this, this whole stream idea and uh, branch out to a viewer right someone who isn't one of our students um i think right from the beginning that's always been something we we thought we could we could do and something we could offer you guys so uh i hope some of our students learn from it too so that's that's the whole point if if uh other strangers can tune in and watch you guys rolling i hope you guys can get something out of watching them rolling when they uh when they share their videos with us too so uh um, sure yeah thank you so much guys thanks for tuning in Thanks for the live commentary too, or the uh, I'm sorry, the the live chat. Um, it actually it makes this all the more fruitful when everybody's chatting up, you know. So that's yeah, good. For sure, for sure. Um, yeah, if you guys aren't following us, if you're just lurking, if you found us, uh, please throw us a follow. We really appreciate it. You can uh, subscribe as well. Use your Twitch Prime or whatever. Um, help support the channel. You can support us also by subscribing on our YouTube. Uh, you could throw us a tip at coffee.com slash mobjj um and most importantly you could support us by getting back to class and training with us this week um we got danny covering uh gi class tomorrow while luke is out on vacation uh mike you said you're doing saturday right yep all right cool cool and then uh i will be there next tuesday covering uh for big mike and then um 
just a reminder, no stream this Sunday. I will be out of town, so I won't be able to stream. Um, but we'll be back to it, as always, next Wednesday. So be sure to tune in for that. Danny loves E-Class very much so. Uh, oh, and everybody, go follow King Chappie. Give him a show, show our boy Cody some love. Uh, he was just streaming earlier tonight, so um, keep the good vibes going. Yeah, thank you very much, guys. Uh, go trim your nails and do your laundry, and don't be stinky. And we will see you guys back at the class. Take it easy. Later.